In a recent video, we discussed a synchronism between Abraham and Hammurabi. Today, we are going to discuss a recent discovery that suggests a new synchronism involving Abraham's father, Terah. Now, the Bible discusses Terah as having come from Ur of the Chaldees. And it talks about this in Genesis 11, 27 to 32, which reads, Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah became father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran became father of Lot. Haran died in the presence of his father Terah in the land of his birth in Ur of the Chaldeans. And Abram and Nahor took wives for themselves. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah and Iscah. And Sarai was barren, she had no child. Terah took Abraham his son, and Lot the son of Haran, his grandson, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and they went out together from Ur of the Chaldeans in order to enter the land of Canaan. And they went as far as Quran and settled there. And the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Quran. In an online article by Christopher Eames, Eames has made the suggestion that Abraham's father, Terah, can be identified as Teru in the Mari texts. Today, we are going to look at some of those Mari texts to see if that hypothesis holds water. An early letter from Teru to Zimri Lin, king of Amari, ARM 2844, reads, Previously my lord informed me via Kalu Rabi as follows, quote, where are all the good deeds that I have showered on Terra? Why has this person not done the same for me even once? End quote. As soon as Halu Rabi told me this, I gathered the information that my Lord sent me and sought to do well by my Lord. Since I fulfilled this matter, my city was ready to cover me up with stones, that is, kill him. But the God of my Lord extracted me from the grip of Elam's viceroy. My Lord should know this. My Lord must not say anything because I could not visit my Lord. The people of Huru are at war with Shadum Labua because of Ishmaadu of Ashnakum. Moreover, in their anger, Ilusumu is being promoted as a political rival for Shadum Labua. I am keeping control of Ashnakum's fortress. As to Shadum Labua, my lord ought to send him out with honor. Once Shadum Labua comes back, I will then come to my lord. Now, this letter is actually one of two very, very similar letters sent by Teru. ARM 2844 and tw ARM 2844-BIS. And they only differ very, very slightly. This letter names the sender as Teru. But the second letter identifies the sender as ruler of Urkesh. And they are sent essentially by the same person. And while later letters get more explicit about this being Teru of Urkesh, we can just tell just from these two letters who is being the sender of this correspondence to Zimri Lim. Now, Urkesh is located in northern Syria, in the eastern portion, at a site called Tel Mozan. Both the kingdoms of Mari and the kingdom of Elam had laid claims to this. But it was sort of on the outskirts. So both of these great kingdoms were fighting over this territory. 
Teru had an alliance with the king of Mari, Zimri Lim. However, his people seem to have had a much closer cultural affinity towards the Elamites. So what exactly is this good deed that Teru is talking about that he did for Zimri Lim? Well, another Mari letter was sent by Yadurnasi, an agent of the King of Mari, which sort of spells out exactly what Teru did for the King of Mari. And we find this in Mari letter 712, which reads, A servant of Shadum Labua, brother of Sametar, the king of Ashnakum, a servant of Teru of Urgesh, which is Urkesh, and a servant of Hamikum of Shuduhkum, have had the head of Ishme Adu of Ashnakum conveyed to Sagaratum. I questioned them, and they told me, quote, The army of Atarum of Andarig came to Ashnakum. Having heard it, Teru and Hamikum killed Ishme Adu and forced the rest of Atamrum out. In this letter, we have a person named Teru of Urkesh, the same Teru that we have seen already in the ARM letters. And the deed that he did, the good deed he did for his king, Zimri Lim, was essentially to kill Ishmeadu and then to deliver his cold, dead head. Now, the evidence presented by this particular letter is more compelling than we often get in ancient Near Eastern studies to identify a particular person. When one tries to put together a family tree, genealogists will tell you it's often not enough to have a person's name. You also need a place associated with that person. And the reason is because having a name and a place helps to narrow the identity of a person so it's easier to confirm. In this particular letter sent by the agent of Zimri Lim, we have identified in here a Teru of Urkesh. So we have a name and a place. So the similarities here between Teru of Urkesh and Terra of Ur is a very compelling match. Now, when most scholars approach the biblical text regarding Terah and Ur of the Chaldees, most scholars will assume that the of the Chaldees part is a scribal gloss. Now, a scribal gloss is an explanation that has been inserted in a biblical text by a later scribe to try to explain something. And in most cases, the majority of scholars will suggest that Abraham's Ur is actually the Ur of Sumer, the great Ur, as it were, the big, big city of of Ur that's located in Sumer. Acts 7, 2-3 states that Ur of Chaldees was located in Mesopotamia. Now, this is actually a bit of a problem for the Ur of Sumer, because by definition, Mesopotamia is actually located between two rivers. It literally means between the two rivers. That's what Mesopotamia means. So Mesopotamia is the land between the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. The problem for Ur of Sumer is that Ur of Sumer is actually located south of the Euphrates, outside of Mesopotamia. Furthermore, Joshua 24, 2-3 describes Terah and the ancestors of the Israelites having lived beyond, or on the other side of, the river. 
This is also a problem for the Ur of Sumer hypothesis. Because Ur of Sumer happens to be on the same side of the Euphrates as Canaan. One does not actually need to cross the river, the great river being the river Euphrates or the river Tigris, to actually go from Sumer to Canaan. So it's clear that Joshua has a different Ur in mind than the Ur of Sumer. This is where the city of Urkesh is actually a more viable hypothesis. This is because Urkesh is located across the Euphrates in the northern portion of Mesopotamia. Finally, the Mari texts mention that Teru of Ur was not a very popular man. The final letter from Teru of Urkesh comes from ARM 2846, 1 prime to 7 prime, and it reads I am always praying to my Lord. I have just now left the comfort of my home and have gone out to Shinak to live as Habirum, that is, a Habiru. Because of this, my Lord must not be negligent towards me. This letter is interesting because Terah leaves Urkesh and he moves westward towards Shinnok. Now, Shinnok is a mountain in the coastal mountain range in Syria, and Haran was just east of that mountain range. The other interesting thing to note is that Teru is living like a Hapiru. And it's clear here that Hapiru is not being used as an ethnonym, but as a class distinction. Teru is going from being the ruler of Urkesh to being an outcast, a Hapiru. And the context of this letter makes that very, very clear. Now, the other thing that's really, really important about these letters is the fact that Zimri Lim, the king to whom Teru addressed all these letters, his dates are confirmed by synchronisms. So we actually have dates for Zimri Lim. And he dates from 1756 to 1741 BC. This just happens to be during the early reign of Hammurabi. And ultimately, Zimri Lim's reign ends by being overthrown and conquered by Hammurabi. So what we have here is a very, very interesting sort of set of synchronisms. Now, we have already discussed, as I said in a previous video, that Abraham's synchronism ties him to both Hammurabi and the kings of Elam. But now we've got a synchronism for Teru that ties Teru, or Tera, to Zimri Lim, or early in Hammurabi's reign. So what we have here is more than just a synchronism. We now have a rudimentary timeline. The father of Abraham lived early in the reign of Hammurabi and the reign of Zimri Lim, king of Mari. And then after that, we have later on in Hammurabi's reign, Abraham moving to Canaan. So it's a very, very interesting timeline here that's, that's coming out as a result of these synchronisms. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed these videos. I hope you learned something today. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time on Ancient Egypt and the Bible.